Hello and welcome to our new show, Health and Wellness Myths vs. Facts. I'm Gargi Rawat. Now, nutrition is a critical part of health and development. Nutrition helps us to maintain a healthy immune system. Eating a nutritious uh, diet also helps improve our physical and mental health, as eating healthy allows us to have more energy and be active. Now, nutrition helps us prevent and better manage various metabolic disorders. And if you have type 2 diabetes, making the right food choices can help you maintain a healthy weight, control blood blood sugar and protect your heart. Faced with so many food choices, it's easy to get confused about what you can and can't eat. Even people who've been managing diabetes for a while have questions about the types of diet and the amount of carbohydrates that they should be consuming. Well, to clear all these and other questions and myths surrounding nutrition, we have an expert panel with us to give us the true facts about nutrition in diabetes. We're joined by Dr. Saeed Hafizullah, MD, Medicine, Internal Medicine, Consultant, Apollo Hospitals, Chennai, and Dr. Rajesh Bhak Chandani, MBBS, MD General Medicine, Consultant Physician, uh, Dr. Rajesh Bhak Chandani Clinic in Bhopal. Thank you so much, doctors, for taking time out and joining us on this uh, very important program. And Dr. Saeed, I'd like to start with you. A diagnosis of diabetes can be scary and overwhelming. The first thing that comes into the mind of people is that they have to cut down on consumption of carbohydrates in their diet. How many carbs per meal is it right for people with diabetes? <coughs> uh Actually, oh, you shouldn't be worried the moment you hear that you are a diabetic. So, ideally, what we say is a 1,800 calories of diet per day. So, in diabetic patients, as soon as we know that they're diabetic, we try to cut down on their carbs. Usually, we say like 80% of your diet can be carbs. That is a typical uh, Indian diet where 80% of uh, your diet is made of carbs and the rest 20 is being shared between fat and uh, uh, proteins. But as soon as we know that uh, you, are, you are a diabetic, what we advise is to take the protein diet, make it 50. The carbs should not exceed 50% of your diet. So that in, in terms of grams, so 1,800 divided by 4. So one uh, 4 calories will give 1 gram of carbs. So somewhere around, uh, you know, you can take around 200 uh, grams of carbohydrates per day. The rest should be protein so that is the ideal uh, diet pattern which we want our diabetic patients to follow so you know your diets which in uh, plant based uh, fiber so cutting down on your simple carbs that is like adding sugars in the tea or uh, sweetness sweet uh, all these things needs to be stopped and uh, uh, you can replace it with uh, uh, like a healthier carbs like sweet potatoes and things like that all right, uh, Dr. Bhakchandani, if you could tell us how important is the role of diet in preventing heart disease? Are there some, you know, some kinds of natural uh, foods and vegetables that can be consumed in order to avoid a heart blockage? Yeah, I see a lot of leafy vegetables and adding apple, banana, oranges, <coughs> pineapples and papaya. Uh, and if you have an access to avocado and kiwis, these are the good foods which can really prevent heart disease. And uh, as Dr. Syed also said that carbohydrates should be minimized in diabetes as well in heart disease patients because most of our Indian diets are carbohydrate predominant. We are nowadays we are doing less work, less physical activity, but we are still consuming more carbohydrates. All right, so Dr. Saeed, so with the help of medications and a healthy lifestyle, can people with diabetes go back to their pre-diabetes uh, sugar levels? Uh, can these people then get any leverage by following a strict and healthy diet? Yes, uh, uh, in, in controlling metabolic diseases, the, the medicines come as a last resort. Primarily, it is the lifestyle changes that anybody has to concentrate on. Like, if your job is sedentary, you need to put extra uh, time to do your exercises if you're eating too much of carbs like uh, as we all know it's all the fast food time so we are dependent on burgers we are dependent on uh, ready to cook feeds all these feeds are high in glycemic indexes all these needs to be stopped so you know there are two kinds of uh, diabetes which you which uh, the viewers should know there's a type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes type 1 diabetes you cannot do anything but to just take insulin Type 2 diabetes is a, is a condition, it is not one, one disease per se, it's a condition which, which can be caused due to obesity, uh, it can be associated with insulin resistance. 
So the primary goal in uh, managing a type 2 diabetes is trying to come down on your weight. If you're obese, if your weight is high, you're going to have insulin resistance. So how can you come uh, counter this insulin resistance? By increasing your BMR, by doing a good weight loss. So how can how you can achieve this is by a good lifestyle. Uh, 30 minutes of walking per day, increase uh, protein diet, increase in plant-based fiber, cutting down on simpler sugars. And then is the point where your drugs are going to help. So merely taking drugs alone is not going to help uh, you in controlling or mitigating your type 2 diabetes and its complication. But rather, it is the lifestyle changes first and then the uh, tablets or the medications which you should take for your diabetes. Having said that, uh, certainly very many of the patients who were obese, who were diabetic, whose sugars were totally you know, haphazard were under uh, poor control with uh, with proper uh, prescription uh, prescription in the sense including their diet, their exercise pattern, and their medication with the proper weight loss. We have reversed diabetes for many of the patients. A reversal in the sense totally off from the drugs, totally off from insulin. They get back to their normal pre-diabetic status. Only thing that they should be follow following uh, for the rest of their life is a proper diet pattern, proper exercise pattern, proper sleep. If they do all this, certainly they can try to be uh, away from uh, the drugs for uh, their lifetime or at least they can push it to a few years in their life to take medicines again. Right, I think if, if anything, COVID has taught us that uh, you know, prevention is better than cure. And uh, Dr. Rajesh, uh, nutrition and healthy eating, as we were discussing, are important aspects of, of diabetes, but also of cardiac rehabilitation programs. So what types of food uh, should one eat or foods that one should avoid or better to better manage a cardiovascular disease? The amount of foods and the quality of foods, they include green leafy vegetables, uh, the sprouted legumes, lot of lentils, and among the fruits, as I told you, that the commonly available fruits like apples and bananas, they everybody know. And if they have an access to fruits like avocados and kiwis, plums and pears, they can be very important. But if the patient is diabetic, they certainly have to consult their doctor that, as Dr. Hafizullah also said, that we need to avoid the glycemic variation we need to control it. I mean, too much of sugary foods, too much of citrus fruits are avoided in diabetes. And fruits with low glycemic index should be taken. For cardiovascular, so what are the foods that one needs to avoid to better manage it? Uh, fruits, basically the energy drinks, aerated drinks, and uh, among the foods, you can say the, uh, the foods which are pizzas, burgers, tinned foods, and the foods which are processed foods, they should be avoided. They contain a lot of triglycerides and which are harmful to our heart. All right. And uh, Dr. Hafizullah, there's also a myth that once you're diagnosed with diabetes, you can't have desserts ever. So is this true? No, uh, actually, it's a myth as your title suggests, the myth versus fact. So it's a myth. So as I said, what is more important uh, in diabetes is you should not exceed the calories. So you should not exceed the calories, and the calories should be in the right proportion. As I said, protein, fat, and the carbs. So I know any human cannot live without uh, having a desert. There's no point living uh, a life like that. So yes, you have cravings. You need to enjoy life too. So on the day when you want to take a desert, make sure the other carbs which you take. Like uh, if you're planning to, if you're going for a party in the evening, if you usually eat rice in the afternoon, try not to take the rice. Make it a salad. Take more of cabbages, more of green leafy vegetables on that day. So you are able to compensate on your carbohydrate intake. So it's like this, it's taking 50, 50, 53 meals. You take dessert, it becomes 100 in the night. So how do you replace it? minus the 50 in the afternoon and make it completely plant-based. So by that means, what you can do is you can keep your amount of carbohydrate per 24 hours under control and that will certainly help you not exceed your, your glucose uh, levels in the blood. So what happens in these cases is, as doctors, we prescribe medication depending upon your diet plan. If you take little excess of carbohydrates from what you are prescribed, what happens is your sugars go high. 
So if you don't take the prescribed amount of carbohydrate, then your sugars drop in. So this mechanism needs to be balanced. So that is why we, we stress on managing uh, your diet prescription properly. As you said, you take a dessert, uh, in the night, skip the sugars in the afternoon, skip the rice or skip whatever carbs you take in the afternoon. By that means you can balance, but this cannot be a habit, this cannot go on weekly or every alternate day. Once in a while, this is okay, this is adjustable. So you are allowed to have a certain cheat days, but you have to just maintain, uh, you know, yes. uh, be more disciplined on other days. Uh, Dr. Rajesh, now if we come back to the pandemic time and, you know, when people are working from home, if, uh, still a lot of people are working from home, uh, caffeine intake has increased and is caffeine then safe for heart health? And how much caffeine is too much? See, uh, ordinarily speaking, low dose caffeine, like one to two cups of small cups of coffee a day is good for heart. But if you take lot large cups, mega large cups, extra large cups of caffeine to keep you awake, I know some people are working with the international uh, offices online and they are uh, taking lot of coffee to make them awake. So that large amount of coffee and, and during the daytime with the Indian time, they are trying to go to the gyms and work out. So that large amount of coffee when it is pumped into the heart that makes the heart, the myocardium of the heart irritable and they make them prone for too much of ar arrhythmias. That is irregular heart activity. This irregular heart activity is the cause of sudden deaths, which you have recently heard over the news that most of the uh, celebs and stars and most of the general population are dying over the treadmill. So basically large amount of caffeine should be avoided. And that's coming to, uh, you know, coffee, but if we talk about teas or green teas, that's something you'd recommend? Yeah, of course, green tea can be recommended, but uh, tea in large amount is also not recommended. All right, that also increases uh, the amount of uh, caffeine yeah, exactly. in, in the body. Well, uh, Dr. Saeed, the Mediterranean and ketogenic diets are both popular eating plants, drawing plenty of interest from people who currently want to lose weight. So, uh, which diet is suitable for people with diabetes? So basically both the diets are almost more or less similar. They don't have uh, much of a difference. I just do not go with the names of keto or Mediterranean. Uh, we as Indians, we, uh, we are genetically uh, created by God to the current atmosphere, to our environment. We should have a own plan for ourselves rather than going keto or Mediterranean. The concept remains the same throughout uh, if you are a diabetic. Your carbs should be the least of the uh, the intake you take. Uh, the first should be protein and then comes the good fat and then comes the carbs. The concept are more or less similar. But these uh, these have become fashionable. The keto diet, Mediterranean diet have all become fashionable. And people just go online and follow the diet. No, we are looking at berries, which are which we are not uh, very much. Uh, you know, that's not a staple food here. We are behind cranberries. We are behind berries, which which do not grow in India. Whereas the people in the West are looking at, at drumstick and moringa here. Moringa is more potent than than going at berries. You know, amla, amla, which is uh, our gooseberry, that has high vitamin C, which has high antioxidants. We are neglecting that and going behind, uh, you know, foreign and uh, all these fancy melatonin and keto. We are behind our cabbage, we are behind spinach, we are behind lettuce. And we are not using cabbage, we are not using cauliflower, which are all uh, our, once upon a time our staple food. So I would say the concept remains the same and one, one size doesn't fit all. You cannot just say a keto diet is good for you, Mediterranean diet, diet is good for you. Diet in these uh, conditions, in metabolic diseases, is almost like a prescription that has to be customized depending upon what kind of allergy you have. If you have allergy to fish, Mediterranean diet is out of question. If you have allergy to olive, uh, Mediterranean diet is out of question. If you have lactose intolerance, again, a keto diet becomes a big uh, issue for you. So that has to be customized with your treating doctor, with the nutritionist associated with your treating doctor, and try to go desi. Try to go with things that are common in your locality. Don't try to eat food that is that is somewhere in USA, that is somewhere, because that is good that is a good diet for people living in the united states of america not for indians indian diet is not good for people in america because there's something uh, called genes there's something called environment and something called your body and your condition all these needs to come in one straight line 
to achieve your goal not merely these names or fashionable uh, diet patterns that is not the case all right so don't chase fad diets dr rajesh anything you'd like to add to that yeah i'll 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 i'll, I'll agree with uh, dr hafizullah but there is a little difference because the keto diets are purely ketone diets where all the body fats and metabolites are consumed to uh, fats are converted to ketones and most of the body is utilizing the ketones only and there is a drastic fall in the weight so this is made for people who very obese people who need an immediate reduction in weight but it is not fit for all and it is not advised for all and about the mediterranean uh, uh, diet would say that it is the diet which is being very prevalent in european countries around the mediterranean sea and its diet very much rich with green leafy vegetables olives and uh, fruits and vegetables so this diet should be uh, taken if possible but i would still stick to indian diet that is a complete it's a balanced diet the only thing is we are still consuming too much of carbohydrate if carbohydrates are taken drastically to normal or to minimals which don't have a calorie or count or a number we can reverse the diabetes we can reverse the pattern which are uh, we, we can reverse the complications of the heart disease very much to normal all right well with that time for us to slip into a short break uh, you've given us a lot to think about especially when we talk about fat diets and you're watching health and wellness myths versus facts we'll be back after this break Welcome back to our new show health and wellness myths versus facts and let's go across to our doctors to talk more about how you can be healthy and how your diet can actually help you manage disease like diabetes and heart problems and uh, Dr Rajesh if uh, the next question to you it said that high triglycerides increase the risk of heart disease uh, which food items exactly. then contain triglycerides see most of the prevalent foods nowadays available and which are ready access to children like pizzas burgers cheese these are the foods which should be avoided all the foods even in the indian diets which are which contain white flour or maida they should be avoided our food which is containing lot of gravies or oils which are burnt they should be avoided they are directly increasing the triglycerides in our body and these triglycerides can be harmful as they increase the plaque they narrow our coronary arteries and they make our patients prone for coronary heart disease at a very premature age all right and doctor say there's a uh, obesity is uh, the most important risk factor for diabetes and even other diabetes related complications how uh, will the person know if he or she is overweight and the and the person is overweight how much weight should he or she lose to get their health back on track so yeah as you said obesity is the biggest nuisance the world is facing today uh, obesity wasn't common in india because uh, you know our work pattern most of them were farmers my grand great granddad my granddad was a farmer so he used to work my grandma used to help my granddad so our lifestyle was like that so we used to walk to the bus stand and then go to the work and then come back from bus stop to the, to your home it was around a 1 km or something like that so people used to walk mostly it was involving manual labor so there was some amount of calorie expenditure people used to burn their uh, calories but now what has happened is we go out of our home in the car then come back go to the gym run in the treadmill so many do that many don't do so our lifestyle has certainly changed leading to overweight obesity related complications so now what is the weight you know we can't say this weight is uh, bad this weight is uh, you know about 60 is obese above 80 kg is obese so it is a calculation between your weight and your height so that is how we calculate the bmi so a bmi of 18 to 24 is adjustable uh, acceptable and a bmi more than 25 you call it an overweight and if it goes on around uh, more than 28 you call it obese and then more than 32 you call it morbid obesity so everything comes down to your bmi so your bmi should be somewhere between 18 to 24 and this has to be correlated with your body fat percentage so body fat percentage again needs to be around a uh, 24% so any uh, fat percentage more than 24 is again harmful this is where uh, you are prone to 
you know once your uh, bmi is more than uh, 25 or your uh, body fat percentage is more than 25 you uh, what you call it as a metabolic syndrome that is a syndrome where a patient or a or a person will have diabetes hypertension uh, high cholesterol levels uh, they can have coronary heart disease that is called heart attack or they can uh, are easily predisposable to stroke uh, they are predisposable to the venous ulcers peripheral vascular disease all these complications are directly related to your weight and uh, obesity related complications so again as, as the panel discussion ever has been uh, discussing from the start it comes down to your diet and lifestyle your calorie intake and calorie expenditure should match any deficit of this will be stored as energy so what amount uh, whatever amount of protein whatever amount of carb you take if that is not being used that is not being burned by your body that will get stored and how does it store it will not be stored as muscle it will be stored as fat so over a period of time uh, you know over uh, over six months if your cal cal calorie expenditure is less you'll have one kg or two kgs of fat stored and next six months another two kgs will add on so here is where we have to concentrate on your a calorie intake and calorie expenditure so initially you uh, you should go in for a hypocaloric diet and increase exercise so that you burn your uh, stored fat so worst okay. case worst of all morbid obesity now bariatric surgeries are there definitely that should be the last resort in managing your obesity all right yeah, uh, the bariatric surgery should be last resort yes dr rajesh and also dr rajesh what foods are both type 2 diabetes friendly and good for cardiovascular health see as dr hafizullah said that uh, a diabetic can have even the sweets even the desserts they wish so there is no contraindication to a fruit but when the sugar levels are quite high so sh fruits with the high glycemic interest like citrus fruit should be avoided i have seen people taking juices juices should be avoided instead people should take the fruits which are more nutritious and they carry a lot of fibers so all the fruits uh, which are citrus uh, uh, apple being the best fruit for diabetic as well as uh, a heart disease patient bananas again kiwis apples pineapple and berries as dr hafizullah said if they are available and if they are very easily accessible they can be beneficial for the heart the main content is that the carbohydrate should be decreased and the fruit should be decreased the fruits with the simpler sugar they should be avoided when a patient is running a blood sugar of 300 and 400 now, right. if a patient is, it's a simple calculation. If the patient is having a blood sugar of 400, he is advised to cut down the blood sugar to 200. That means the patient is advised to bring down the carbohydrate content by 50% on every meal. So, if this is a simple formula with this, if he follows, he can revert back to the normal pre diabetic state. And obesity also, as Dr. Hafizullah said, it carries a worst prognosis because it increases the resistance to insulin and makes their uh, high triglyceride levels, they are again harmful to the heart. All right. Well, thank you so much, uh, doctors, uh, Dr. Uh, Hafizullah and Dr. Bhaktandani for joining us on this program and talking about good nutrition and managing your health. Uh, thank you all for thank watching. You. Goodbye. Thank you.